Aloha. Hey, it's Julie Zemelis, 365 Hawaii, 365 Hawaii team, uh, Keller Williams Realty. And I am here with the amazing Amber Haley, real broker. And we are offering you our... Um, East Side Real Estate Market Statistics and Market Update. And uh, I, I lost my mind there for a second because we're also going to have another discussion. After she gives you the stats, we're going to talk a little bit about property taxes. So um, let's uh, find out what's happening on your side of the island, my friend. All right. So as far as East Hawaii goes, we like to focus on the Puna District and the South Hilo District. And it's a much busier market over there than on the west side of the island. It's a much more affordable market. Um, so, Sell it, Amber. Yes. <laughs> I am very enthusiastic about East Hawaii. Uh, it's a beautiful place to live. But let's get into the stats because it's kind of interesting. I was just telling Julie what I saw for um, the most recent full month of data data do you say data or data i say data but yeah. data potato 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 data, potato, potato. <laughs> anyway let's get into it uh, talking about the data that we have for puna and hilo so let's get into it so one of the most important relevant things to you is the median home value so as of right now for single family homes the whole last month of data we have is showing it at four hundred and ten thousand dollars for the Pune District. Yeah. Now that surprised me a little bit. I know that sounds very affordable and it is, and that's awesome, but that's a higher median value than where we were at a year ago Wow. in June. So. Um, the median value last June, 2022, was 380,000 oh, okay. for the Pune District, which okay. is interesting. Yeah. And then when I look at the month previous, it was 345,000. So we are going back in the upward direction for the Pune District. Oh, interesting. Now, again, this is a snapshot yeah. of data, but it's yeah. interesting when things kind of change yeah. uh, because we had been seeing a dip right. so far this right. year. Yeah. So that's good news for people who may be interested in selling their homes. Uh, I, it might be kind of motivational for people who are kind of on the fence saying, "What? maybe I should wait, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. If now is the right time to buy, I think... Get in the market. Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, I was watching the um, update on the national market with my guy uh, from Altus Research, which tracks the real-time statistics, and he said that this is the most balanced market we've had in three years, wow. and that buyers are getting a chance to kind of look around, mm -hmm. right? Um, sellers who are overpriced, again, are not selling very quickly, but the fact that um, he does not see a spike up or down for the rest of the year. He ah. said that basically um, the buyers that are out understand that the uh, interest rates are higher and they've gotten used to that. And so now they're out more because they just wanted to see kind of what was – so they kind of pulled back from shock mm -hmm. and then they're back out again because people still want to buy houses. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we're seeing is that there's a little bit more buyers out there because – all the people who said, oh, my God, what's going to happen with interest rates? Well, we're seeing what's happening with interest rates. They're hitting 7%. Yeah. Um, but people are saying, well – I don't care because I need to buy a house. That's the thing. Some people, no matter what the market is doing, need to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, this is kind of the time. If if you're looking to be in a house by fall, to get your kids in a school, mm -hmm. you know, into the school and get the move done, now is the time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. In fact, this is like a pretty popular time of year to do that around yes. July fourth, sixth, yes. seventh, and eighth. And so that's another thing too with the statistics, you guys. Um, normally, what we try and do is uh, give you guys the stats around like the sixth through the tenth of the month. This is a little bit early. Um, yeah, actually, and we're doing West Hawaii too. That um, all the realtors put all their stats in by the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we do see sometimes that if we do just a little bit more, we get a little bit more of a stronger mm -hmm. statistics, we could say. So, but you're pulling these off, and you're, it's, it's yeah. A this is, so. Yeah, so this is the, the data that I was telling you was the full stats for June. Okay. So go. it was the full month. And they know. closed it off yes. by June 30th. Yes. New yeah. Right? So we don't have, I'm not talking July just yet because it's a little bit yeah. too early, but yeah. we will, we'll see. That will be interesting to see if it continues in that direction or kind of levels off yeah. or which way it goes. So I'm excited. Okay. Stay tuned. Now let's talk about South Hilo. Um, South Hilo, there's not quite as much trading as the Pune district. Um, and it's, it's, uh, the land's a little more valuable. It's a, usually a little more sought after than the Pune district. Um, but let's talk about it. So the median home value in South Hilo for the month of June was $539,500. So that is also interesting to me because that is a smidge higher than where we were at in 2022 in June, okay. where we were at $537,500. So $2,000 more, but 
still more. Right, not right, less. Right, right. Like we saw and the last one. For all you guys thinking that we were going to have a housing crash, clearly that's not happening. I know. I know. I think people are catching on to yeah. that now. <laughs> yeah. um, and then as far as last month went in uh, Hilo when we, we had this update from Volcano, the median value was sitting at 495 So today, uh, the it's even up from that. 495 yeah. all the way up to 539.5. So that's interesting. We still have low inventory. Again, there's a lot more houses for sale right now in East Hawaii than West Hawaii. But I will say because of that, the good listings, I am running into multiple offers. Oh, okay. And I am hearing a lot of people talk about um, being surprised at what the prices are at still. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's holding strong. It is holding strong even with those interest rates. So, yeah. you know. If you're looking for a house, now's the time to shop. If you want to get in by fall, now is definitely the time because our escrows in Hawaii take usually 45 to 60 mm -hmm. days. So right. you calculate that out by when you need to be in a house and how long it might take you to find one and get one under contract. Yeah, and if you haven't figured it out yet, um, Hawaii schools start early, usually the first week in August. So this is this is it. I mean, this is already getting to that point. This is so, it. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so we can talk a little bit about days on market because yeah. that that's a statistic that we've when we've been following all year we've seen kind of increase and increase and increase, especially mm -hmm. compared to last year. So the most recent data I have on days on market is for Puna sixty nine days is kind of our average right now. So that is uh, going to be let's see. A year ago, we were at 47. So it is still more days on market, even though we have not, we are not seeing that price drop in the most recent data. And uh, let's talk about South Hilo. It's 52 compared to a year ago, 17. Oh, wow. Know, things were moving yeah. really, really yeah. fast. Yeah, last year was, they called that the unicorn market. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is kind of interesting talking about stats and numbers in this market that's been kind of all over the place. It was a strong seller's market. And then it was kind of an in-between market. Um, but the bottom line is what's important, what you guys need to know is kind of our prices going up and down and how close to list price do you need to offer? Um, so that's the that's the important information. What is the list price? Do you know? Uh, list, okay, so for the Pune District, list to sales price for the last month of data we have is 81%. So stuff was selling. Now I don't have the most, most recent, so okay. we'll have to like, see on our next month what it is uh -huh. um and then for Hilo, it was sitting at about 92 percent. so yeah. that's definitely down from where we were at last year but i think the more important stat is that the median price is up yeah so so wait a minute so are you saying that 80 percent? that means that people were bidding 20 percent under asking price they were getting 80 percent of what they wanted that was for just a month Yes, that was the list to sales price. So that was probably some really overpriced. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was also the Pune district. So when we were talking about the Pune district, we have a wide range of houses there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's a lot of kind of like one-offs that can really kind of skew the data. Okay. Um, because we have lava zones one, two, and three, like we always talk about there. Right. And those are at, sitting at quite different price points. And, and in generally speaking, homes that are in riskier areas or harder to finance um, like the houses that sit in Lava Zone 1 or 2, those will typically have more days on the market right. because your buyer pool is less. Yeah. So that kind of skews the data. For okay. Puna. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. You're saying that they, they're on the uh, market for 80 days. I thought we were looking at the percentage Oh, no, no, no. no. We, were, we were. We were. Okay. Yes, yes, so yes. 80% though. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so basically people are just saying I'm not paying the price. I'm going I'm to give yeah. you a lower deal. Yes. And then, okay. Yeah. That's, so maybe there's deals to be had. Yeah. You I know. And some, and some some sellers who are willing to like, you know, make a, make a, make, make a, a deal with you. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask. But it sounds like in Hilo though, that's not the case. 96? It was like 92. Okay, 92. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. still kind of like there's some deals yeah. being made. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good news for buyers. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it makes it so that people are still buying houses. The sellers have to price aggressively. And buyers are still able to come in and say, you know, here's some yes. room, room for negotiation, as they say. Now, I know that a lot of you who are watching the live stream are maybe not living in the state of Hawaii right now. Or you don't have a house in the state of Hawaii right now. But some of you maybe do. There's a lot of people on the fence about selling, obviously, we have really low inventory because yeah. there's a lot of people not wanting to sell. Probably those interest rates have a lot to do with it. They're mm -hmm. maybe locked into a, yeah, a like better locked one into a two or three percent um, than we have right now. But I do have a lot of clients who are doing the sell and then buy. Mm -hmm. um, so for some people, that might be good news. Now, while you can't time everything right, you can't time the interest rates right. If you're selling a house, uh, 
maybe in East Hawaii to buy another one. At least, you know, you got your home values still, still yeah, holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, um, they're not going down further like I yeah. thought that they might be. So, Good. You know? Because I, I put a, uh, a couple, uh, an editor, your daughter, into a home in HPP yes. about 45 days ago. And yes. it's nice to say that the prices are holding steady. Yeah, instead of, you know, like a yeah, big Yeah, because there's nothing being... worse than buying a house and then going, like, hmm, was that the top of the market? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so it's still it's still a fun market over there because uh, you can buy housing that you can't obviously buy in West Hawaii. Um, and with the rain that we've been having here lately, uh, when we make fun of uh, East Hawaii for its moisture experience, uh, we're getting our share over here too. So uh, yeah. it's a tropical island, I say. You know, whatever, you're going to get some rain. Everything yeah. stays green. So, uh, yeah. Um, so in terms of um, the, um, like, what, like in terms of what you're seeing out there, um, are you seeing like... Uh, you know, um, are there who's coming into the market? Are we are we getting people off island? Are there people doing inter island buying or you know what yes. are you seeing? Yes, yeah? uh, we always have a lot of people in East Hawaii coming from the market over on Oahu. Oh. Um, either because now they work remotely and they're looking for more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So the prices on Oahu are they're crazy, crazy, and the market you know a lot more competitive than over here. So we always get a lot of uh, buyers buyers from that market. I'm sure same as over here in uh, West Hawaii. We get get a lot of people who start their home search in West Hawaii and then realize how much farther their money can mm -hmm. go in East Hawaii. Um, I do have a lot of people coming to me to look for investment properties. They're like, oh. send me a deal, send me a deal, send me a deal. But as we just talked about, we haven't seen a drastic drop mm -hmm. in home prices. So, you know, while there are deals out there sometimes, I wouldn't say that this is a huge market for them, but there are a lot of people sitting and waiting for a time to um, come buy some investment properties. So right. there, you know, there is quite a mix out there, yeah. Yep, yep. I will say I do have clients right now, I work mostly in East Hawaii, but I do have clients in West Hawaii right now. What I am noticing is different is that uh, it's a lot harder. In West Hawaii, there's more competition. Oh, them. yeah, yeah. So every house uh, pretty much that I've had buyers interested in, even first few days on the market, there's been multiple offers already. Oh, now, while yeah. I do see that in East Hawaii, it's not to the same extent as I've seen in West Hawaii. So that's kind of interesting, uh, I think, yeah. Okay, okay. Eric's got uh, a question. A uh, question is uh, from uh, Jamie. Is vacant land prices holding steady or dropping on the east side? Uh, vacant land. Let me pull up that stat, the stats for you right now. So it's usually in line with um, what the, the home sales are doing. So right now the median price for vacant land in Pune is $35,000, which is <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really, really low. And that, that doesn't get you what you think it is. It's it not doesn't, oceanfront property. It doesn't get you. Yes, exactly. It doesn't get you what you think it is. That's a little bit lower than when we were at, where we were at last year, um, but not significantly. That was thirty eight thousand last year, and then two hundred and ninety eight thousand for Hilo, and compared to last year, it was at two hundred and eighty thousand. So they are holding. I would say just on that little snapshot of data, um, there are a lot of vacant land sales. Um, there's a lot of people who buy vacant land in East Hawaii, always hoping to build, and they kind of hold on to it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. It is a lot harder to go through the building process than I think a lot of people realize. Um, and a lot of people don't realize, too, if they're first-time homebuyers, that you can't finance land the way mm. you can. I know it sounds a little silly, but... A lot of people think you can, you know, get a mortgage on, on a vacant lot and it just doesn't work that way. So most of them are cash, all cash sales. So if you're an all cash buyer who maybe wants to buy a parcel and then you kind of understand that the building process here, if you're coming from a different part of the world, is, is probably a lot different than what you're used to. Expect it to take longer. The contractors are, are really busy mm -hmm. and the good ones are, you know, they're really highly sought after. All, all the supplies here have to be shipped over from you know, across an ocean. So everything just goes a little bit slower here. So I find a lot of my clients who start out looking at uh, land, vacant land, often move the route of um, a single, single family, family home. home. Yeah. In fact, we just got a, a guy who contacted us this last week and he said, um, you know, give me some land deals, right? And he's mm -hmm. to Hawaii, oh, there's $78,000. And then Eric's like, well, let me show you and let me tell you a little bit more about that. And we did a video on that too, you guys. Go into see, um, we did one, um, it's called Cheap Land. And it talks about some of the, um, what, what the, you know, the, 
the downfalls of some of this cheap land, like we're talking about what the real expenses are. But when Eric started talking about really what it's like to try and get a piece of open land and then try and build, he did too say, maybe I should go find a single family home in, uh, you know, in one of the Lava Zone 3 so it actually, you know, is safe and you can get uh, insurance on it. Yeah. So, you know, and yeah. there's deals and there's, there's certain deals that are happening in Lava Zone 3. Yes. Right? I mean, it's certainly like, for a lot of people, they see the price, and it's it is shockingly like pretty affordable. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, um, I mean, you could buy it. You could buy it. Okay, maybe it's not perfect, but you could buy a single family home for three hundred fifty thousand dollars in Lava Zone Three, or are those days over. You could, you could, yes, yes. Most of them, it is tough. It is tough below okay. the four hundred thousand. Right? Yeah, but yes, there there are some homes for sale in that price point. Yeah. But if you're looking for like a newer construction, that that's going to be significantly uh -huh. yeah. higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jamie wants to know, uh, she says she wants to get an off-grid yurt on land. Are those available? Yes, I have sold an off-grid yurt on land. But it was not uh, financeable, the last one that I did. So my client paid all cash. Um, another thing that we see sometimes is seller financing. So oh. the seller will basically finance. It usually requires a really, really high down payment, like over half. Yeah. And then much shorter terms, like five years is usually the yeah. longest. I see it in a higher interest rate. So it's not ideal for everybody, but sometimes it, it can, um, you know, work out great for both the buyer and the seller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I was talking to somebody, because one of my, my friends, my hairdresser, uh, wants somebody to do um, seller finance for him in West White. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it just doesn't really happen. The, the reason why they do seller finance is because they can't sell their home. Mm -hmm. Where in West White, if you put anything on the internet uh, right now, like, yes. boom, it's going to be gone. Yes. And so trying to find a seller financing, crazy screaming deal in West White, ain't happening so east hawaii at least it sounds like you can do that because again you have to pay cash for some of these pieces of mm -hmm. property right and not a lot of people have two hundred thousand dollars in cash sometimes yeah so you know like you know it's 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 a step-by-step -step basis and um if uh do, do do things like that like yurts come up on the mls can people find it when they're looking uh at it? yes there it, there are yurts um it, it might be a little bit trickier depending on where you're looking on the internet to to search that like if you're just looking on the zillows and all of that it might be a little bit harder to find but uh i wouldn't say that it's like a super common listing but off the top of my head i can think of one or two that i know that are on the market right now in east hawaii yes oh yeah okay. so yeah they do exist if you are somebody who wants to be sent those properties or get on listing alerts uh you can reach out to me and i can get you set up on that um, but yeah, we do see those. They got, you know, pretty trendy and pretty, pretty popular. I know I have friends. I know people who live in them and they, they really like them, but it is one of those things. The last one I did sell kind of had some permits pulled from the County, but the, the seller couldn't confirm whether it was actually permitted and, and just kind of disclosed. Like, as far as I'm concerned, it's not really, com the permits aren't complete. This is an unpermitted property. And, and that most of those I've seen are really going to be cash deals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So and I don't know this. So help me <laughs> when you put a yurt up on a piece of land you have to get a permit well that, see now that this is when we get into the dicey thing i mean technically when you build anything you probably you, you're supposed to get a permit so, i guess if they want you to like get a permit for a deck they probably want you to get a permit for a yurt because a yurt basically sits on a deck right yes yes so that's why you know like the last one i did we when we pulled stuff up from the county there was there were permits that had been opened but never closed out oh. and so uh, you know we couldn't really say whether it had been fully permitted from the county and whether the way that you was set up whether it was all yeah. good or not okay um so yeah i think i think yes but yeah like people okay. buy them okay well theoretically if you uh, and again yeah. i'm just like having this chat with her real quick um if you bought a non-permitted or permits were still open kind of place mm -hmm. could you go in and Say, okay, county, what do I need to do to close these permits? And then close those permits and therefore value, raise the value of the property? So that's a question that I get a lot. Okay. And um, some people, I'm sure some people have that. I mean, it is possible. Okay. It is possible to do. Is it possible on every property? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, There's I, you know, I, I the hell down. <laughs> but in actuality, um, and I'm not the authority on every situation that this has ever happened in. But in actuality, that uh, what people find when they go to do that is that it's going to be a lot more expensive than they think it's going to be, mm. and in the end, it's just not worth it. Oh. The dollars and cents of it, or then you when you go to the county with a property that has a lot of unpermitted, you're kind of opening up a whole can of worms because you want to go get one thing permitted, then you're probably going to have to get all of the things, and that's gonna 
You know, if you are buying a property with the intent of pulling it up to getting would, permitted, you should you should probably just get a property that has county permits. That would be my suggestion because yeah. I can't guarantee that. And like she said, you can and, open and up a can of worms yeah, and, and, and you get, get somebody out there expensive. looking and they're saying, okay, to do anything here now, yes, you better now do this. All of a sudden you're looking at, we need all new plumbing. We need a, a septic. We need oh. all new electrical. We need this. We need oh. that. We need to upgrade this. And you're just, why didn't you buy a different house there at that point? Now so, get this. Have you ever heard people getting red tagged because their, their permits were so bad? That they felt that the county felt that now you're living in an unsafe structure and that you get red tagged until you can figure it out. Does it ever happen? I have not. I mean, there are certain properties that have had different issues, like sloughing into the ocean, that I know oh, have yeah. things have come up with the county. But in general, for those these types of properties we talk about all the time, no. Okay. But you know, again, I'm not gonna okay. stand yeah. here and be the authority that yeah. it's never happened and it won't ever happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, another so one. So Brad is. Says Hi, Brad. You're, you're kidding. You're kidding. You're kidding. Ha ha ha. There. It, and Jennifer says hello, ladies. And uh, Lance says aloha. Lance Hello. Bond? Uh, Lance Owens. Owens. Hey, look yeah. at he's looking at the cop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lance is tomorrow. Yeah, Lance is tomorrow. So if you guys want more information about West Hawaii uh, market statistics, Lance Owens will be sitting in the amber chair tomorrow. <laughs> and so, and Brad is saying, Brad uh, is saying to Lance, see how high the bar is for you, Lance. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if it's that if it's that high today. But, you know, we're 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 taking it easy so that Lance can get really good ratings tomorrow. Yeah. But um, for those of you, I do want to mention those of you who are interested in yurts and maybe getting more questions answered from. Somebody who's more of a yurt expert. There is uh, a physical location where you can go look at yurts in the Puna District here on the Big Island. I believe they're called the Yurts of Hawaii. Oh. A quick Google search. I'm sure we'll pull them up. Big Island yurts. Um, and I do know I've been on their website. They have a lot of like Q&As on there. Or you could call and ask. And they could probably really talk you through like the, the permitting and, and, and stuff with the county. Also, a resource to everybody that you always have is you can always call the county planning department if you have specific questions about permitting. Because I can answer them like all day long. However, I'm not the you know absolute the authority on all of yes. them. And you're, you're the gonna source of the go, source. So go yes. to the source. I can tell you the things I see. I can tell you how mm -hmm. I feel about things. But I, you know, the county is the one that's going to be able to tell you yes and no and black and white more on the, the permitting yeah. stuff. Well, and also if you buy the yurt package, I guess, mm -hmm. right, from the people here on the island, they're probably going to give you all the information yes, you need yes, to know about yeah, buying yeah. the right stuff so you can put the, get the right permits. And because it's like almost like, you know, almost like, I'm going to say, you know, a model home or whatever, uh -huh. that they, they have all the specs. They probably have all the stuff, so mm -hmm. all you have to do is take it to the county, you know, the county and say, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing. They probably have a pretty good That's shot. It's yes. when you get sideways and start doing your own little fun things yes. that then you really have uh, to worry about, you know. And also, if you try to put five on one property and create your own little community, I know you guys are out there, um, and then start using them for Airbnbs. Don't do that uh, because then you have a whole new other experience of getting in the permit. Yeah, you because know, that, that's not on the zoning aspect. We can talk about zoning. Yeah, yeah. You can't be out there making your own little uh, neighborhoods with uh, yurts and uh, tiny homes. Just so you know that, right? Yes. You got your question. So the other Lance Bond says, "Aloha, ladies." Oh, there he is. There's Lance. So Lance, we were just talking about the fact that you're moving to East Hawaii, and look at your housing prices have not dropped. So congratulations, Lance. <laughs> Going in the right direction. In the right direction. Um, hey, speaking of the county, that's what I wanted to talk about. So I have a buyer who started asking me about property uh, taxes, mm -hmm. and. Um, there's a whole experience about property taxes that one of these days we should just have like a little oh, yes. table discussion about property taxes. Um, so there's a county website. There is. And it's called tax, Hawaii tax. Yes. It's called something like that. Okay. Hawaii tax, <laughs> Hawaii <laughs> county, county of Hawaii tax. Yes. Brad, Brad, Brad yes. well, I've looked that up, Brad. Um, <laughs> and so I called him today and I said, here is an address of a property. Can you tell me? what the tax structure on it is. And she said, you know, if you have the TMK, you can actually go yes. to the website and you could actually find out what the taxes are for specific properties mm -hmm. on that website. But then I asked her in general, what's the story with tax rates? Now, I, I'm pretty sure that the tax rate is the same across the entire county of Hawaii. It was $6.16 per every $1,000. Mm -hmm. So, and that's if you live here, mm -hmm. and that's if you haven't taken another like thing, like you're 62 or 72 or disabled or a vet, mm -hmm. uh, which all have different tax structures. But if you go with that, that gives you 
good idea of what you might have to pay for property taxes. And obviously they're twice as expensive in West Hawaii because the prices of houses are so much more expensive. But if you are trying to figure out what you will be paying in property taxes, it's a good start. And you can go to the yeah. website. And this is actually, this is a great thing to bring up with uh, people who are buying a house here because uh, I don't know if you've been browsing the internet and you probably have noticed when you see a house, oftentimes it will have the property taxes listed. Like I think probably like the Zillow and stuff yeah, have yeah. that. Now when you see that number, that is showing you what the most recent tax bill was for the current oh, homeowner. Wow. So when there is a sale of a house and every year also, uh, the county does reassess the value. So, uh, at a point of sale, generally speaking, and, and right now, probably for everybody watching, this is likely the situation, the, the taxable assessed value is going to jump up quite a bit because maybe the property hasn't sold in a while, and so it's probably more valuable, right. generally speaking, than Ca it was County's last time. always looking for those more yeah. opportunities to take it out of yes. your pocket. <laughs> so, that's usually the biggest jump is that point of sale. Okay. Now, we had a lot of properties because the market went up so high over the last few years that if they did not have the homeowner's exemption, yep. they are allowed, you know, they can assess it at higher than 3% more every year. So um, something to keep in mind, to sum all that up, why it's important to you, what I'm trying to say is that the number that you see is not going to be necessarily your number because you your situation is different you maybe you're disabled maybe you're buying a second home and that they have a homeowner's exemption because it's their primary residence mm -hmm. uh, maybe the house is a lot more valuable than the last time maybe it hasn't sold in like 40 years so the value is just going to jump really high at the point of sale so don't go off of that number yeah. completely and, and that's how this all started yes because this guy saw it on zillow and he naturally assumed that that would be his tax liability and yes. i said no so we actually found out the guy who owned the house was actually in california California, which is a higher tax rate than mm. if you live here full time. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes it can be better or worse. Usually you're going to end up, just assume you're probably going to end up paying higher though, because that's yeah. almost always what it is. Um, and just how much higher will depend. Uh, like we were mentioning, there is like a, a website where you can see all the different, um, the amounts so you can kind of estimate based on what yeah. you think your tax situation is going to be. And when you do buy a house, and I tell all my buyers this, file for if it is your, going to be your primary residence you will likely qualify for the homeowner's tax exemption. That will save you the most, unless you are like disabled or something, that will save you for most people the most amount of money on yeah. your taxes. Yeah. Especially if you knew that you bought the house from an investor. Cause, and then, and mm -hmm. then this is, okay, this is the interesting story too. So let's see if you know this one. Um, it's July now, right? Let's say you buy a house today. Okay, so you do the homeowner exemption and you file it in December, right? So then it takes them six months to vet you to tell you that your, your tax has changed. And you don't actually start seeing the savings until January of 2025. Mm -hmm. That's insane! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so my poor guy, he was hoping to be able to get that new tax exemption because he's living here full time and get it pretty soon mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't have to pay so much on his the, the mortgage, the payment for opening the home. And when I told him it was gonna be 2025, he's like, Oh man. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's the truth. So now I, I looked it up and uh, I'm sure Brad maybe has put the link in there yet. He did. Oh, oh, I love you, Brad. Brad. <laughs> you guys ready Our for guy, it? Brad. Okay, uh, it's called hawaiipropertytax.com. There yes. you go. Yeah, Hawaii Property that, Tax. Uh, Jamie has a question Is the property tax higher if you don't own a vehicle? Uh, 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 own a vehicle registered? A registered vehicle? I, I don't, I don't as think far as I know, it. that has no Nothing impact. to do with it, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the lady who was talking to me though, and get this, okay, somebody told me this and it, it became true, that if you call the tax office and talk to the appraisal, um, they're very nice. She was very nice and she explained a lot of mm -hmm. these things to me. Mm -hmm. um, and she said that she was based in South Kona, because I said, is it true that property taxes have jumped 20% over the last two years? And she said, well, for land in South Kona, it's jumped 40%. Wow. Yeah. She says different TMKs in different regions of the island have had different up, ups and downs in general. Mm -hmm. So it would appear that it's not just when you sell your house, when the last time it sold, that's going to jack it up. It's the fact that it's just going to be jacked up. Yes. And another thing that I have seen happen um, in certain neighborhoods in the Puna district, and I'm sure it's happened in different parts of the island as well, is the county has changed um, the tax zoning, for example, from like agricultural mm -hmm. to residential. So it's at a higher rate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have the homeowner's exemption, that doesn't really affect you. But if you don't, say it's a second home, mm -hmm. that really can affect you. 
No. Uh, and you don't really have a lot of say in that. Right. So, I mean, you can protest it, but <laughs> yeah. it didn't change anything for anybody. So, um, yeah, those are taxed at different rates. So, you know, taxes change. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, keep in mind because you know, it just adds to the to, to the to the to the cost of uh, owning homes here. Um, and uh, again, though, people coming from Texas and California, New Jersey, will still say, "Oh, oh my God, you guys don't even realize how lucky you are. It's, uh, so, true. it's so less expensive to be here in terms of uh, property taxes than it is in other parts of the country." So it's you know. Yeah, if you're relocating, you'll likely be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah. So six dollars for six dollars and sixteen cents for every thousand. Um, you know, I, I think it's three times that in like New Jersey. So, is there? Do you have a question? No, no. Okay. Um, and also, people on YouTube, we'll drop that um, link over into the description notes also, so you guys can have that as well. Um, and um, is there other? pressing ex oh oh um and maybe if you guys want to tune into the next video um lance and i i think are going to be talking a little bit more about the uh transit accommodation rental bill Ooh. because lance is in on that and um that is on it's like one of its last drafts and they are going to be putting some interesting things into that bill yeah. for people who are considering getting a home that has a airbnb experience to it Yes, which right. is a lot of people yeah. on the Big Island. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of people, for those of you who aren't aware, um, when you host, when you have a hosted Airbnb, as of right now, you don't need to get a permit um, for it. If it's hosted, uh, the unhosted ones did, do need that, mm -hmm. and you can't just get it. It has to, there's certain things. It had to be grandfathered in, or you have to be in certain zoning. So this is going to affect a lot of people. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and also, um, I don't know... If I guess you guys must on your side have a vacation zone. You know how ours is all of like mm -hmm. friggin' you know Alihi Drive where all the condos are. Does, does Hilo? And it, it, it does. It's very small. It's okay. very small. And it's not like it. Uh, most of it is the the buildings that you see around like Hilo Bay. Hilo Bay. Okay. Uh, but even some of those that are in the zoning, the actual building doesn't allow it. So it's a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've heard talks of them wanting to like from people at the county wanting to maybe open up parts of Volcano. I think that would be really great. That would be nice for the community. Well, there, my friend but... ended up having to sell her house in Volcano mm -hmm. because they cut her out of the being an STVR. Yeah, and it was a tree house, yeah. so she wasn't living in the tree house, and they wouldn't let her keep it, so she had to sell it. Yeah, so you know, maybe they will open up more zoning, but as as of right now, if you're shopping in East Hawaii, there's not very many areas where there is zoning where you can have that if there's not already a non-conforming use permit in place. Right. So, so you're living in your rental unit. Yes, I do get that a lot from people wanting to buy. They say, you know, I want to buy a house now, you know, before everything gets so unaffordable. But, you know, I'm not going to retire and live there for like 10 years. So I'll vacation rent it. You can't just do that in no, East Hawaii. No, no. no. So. But you can do long-term rental. Yes, and there is such a need for long-term yeah. housing in East Hawaii. So yeah. And, and in West Hawaii. In that, all yes, over Hawaii. All over. No matter where you're buying in Hawaii, there's a need for that. Um, and then you can hang on to the real estate until mm -hmm. you're ready for it. Yes. You can get probably some level of a tax exemption from owning a home, like the mortgage interest reduction tax, and you're also helping the island economy, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you're, and, you know, maybe you could be cool and help people who are first responders, teachers, doctors, whoever, all the people that we need to actually make this island run. So, and maybe dog owners, maybe let some dog owners in there. It's so hard yeah, for dog people it is to dog find people. rentals. I know. Yeah, and if you're watching this and you, you know, have a home that you were thinking about using for a short-term vacation rental, and you're thinking, you know what, the county's kind of kind of getting to my stuff, literally, help a help local out. <laughs> Long-term rentals, and I think for a lot of people, if they actually break down the numbers, especially if you're not a resident, uh, over here, it might make more financial sense and be a lot less hassle mm -hmm. to do a long-term rental. So I challenge you to maybe crunch the numbers on that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, just question for you, um, and maybe one of these fun people who are watching uh, in our group. Um, to do a long-term rental, I still think you need a GE tax. Yeah. GE, GE, GE tax. tax, yeah. Okay, so that means that, just so you guys know, um, you basically have to get a business license with yeah. the state so you can start paying your general excise taxes on the income that you get, I guess, from short-term and long-term. Yeah, any income that has any kind of nexus in the state of Hawaii, we get to pay, pay a fun excise tax on. On top of your property taxes. Yeah. On top of your sales tax. So <laughs> it's kind of like a sales tax. It's like for fun. Yeah. So um, Brad says, uh, here in Minnesota, property tax is based on assessed value, which changes annually. Mine yeah. goes up almost every year. Yeah. Every year. It, it's okay. similar. It's yeah. similar here yeah. on the Big Island. It goes yeah. up every year. But again, if you are, have the homeowner's exemption, it cannot go up more than 3% every year. 
Um, and, and in and years like it's value. been, it's not tied to market value. It's not tied to market value. The the, the how they assess. The, yeah. yeah. So they, they they're staying low to not just so there's it's because they had to go up too high before. So it, it is it tends to be on the below what market. Yeah, yeah, yes, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. A lot so of people will look at the said. tax. A lot of people will look if you see a website that pulls up tax assessed value, and uh, just for illustration's sake, say it says three hundred thousand dollars. That does not mean the house is market value is three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Likely, the house's market value is north of four hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Um, that is, those are just numbers I'm throwing out. But yes, yeah, so usually it's quite a bit higher than market value. So don't be confused by the two. And be glad that the tax assessed value is generally a lot the lower, lower yeah. than market value because yeah. you don't want to be paying tax assessed yes. value on what you right. actually paid for the house. And so Eric was saying that if you bought your house and you have the homeowner's exemption, it can only go 3% up every year, even if the housing prices had jumped 30 or 40. Yes. Okay, yeah. so that way you just know that you're kind of like in the, in the mix. So, yeah. yeah. So if it was at... Uh, three hundred thousand. It could only go up three percent, up at max three percent of that. Even if the house you bought at four hundred fifty thousand, and maybe the market value jumped up to seven hundred thousand yeah. or something yeah. crazy. So yeah. yeah. So put that into your cost of living expenses too. If those are going to go up three percent every year. Yeah. yeah. Well, they might not go up, but they can't go more than that. At least. Okay. So they might not go up, but they have gone up twenty forty five percent. But lately, yeah, I mean, the last on. few years they yeah. definitely have. Maybe they'll so. give us all a break. <laughs> maybe uh, we'll actually see some. Uh, and I always have my little soapbox about. Where's the money going? But I'm not going to go there today. So, uh, <laughs> follow the money. Follow the money. It's not, well, it's not, Hawaii, it's not going to me. East Hawaii has better stuff than West Hawaii. They've got beautiful parks. They've got great roadways. You guys get, you know, you're, you're doing pretty good. So, um, is there uh, anything else in terms of uh, real estate housing questions? Uh, Brad was just saying that, uh, in, uh, that uh, taxes go up more than 10% for them. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so l- lucky we live Hawaii. Yep, there you go. Um, so get this also, you guys, we're talking about mortgages. Um, I did have, I was going to have a live uh, Zoom call today with uh, Scott and uh, Joe, and um, I had to get my teeth done. So um, they decided to do one on their own. Yeah. And so uh, if you guys want to go to the uh, YouTube channel, um, uh, I'm, uh, the live people give me like an hour or so um, and I'll upload it and get it up on the YouTube channel so you can hear us talk about property taxes and how it affects mortgages and trying to get qualified but also some different other things that have come up lately that affect uh, financing and the rates and where our interest rates going and all that kind of good stuff so um, it's a kind of like a little bonus content for you guys if you guys want to learn more about that and then also um, like we talked about Lance will be giving the update tomorrow and then we'll have our tt and which is our island-wide real estate update with the mortgage partners coming in to talk about all the the, the, the financing and you can tune in live because it's a zoom call so if you're uh wanting to ask specific questions like our buddies over you're hearing us like you know doing the question and answer thing uh we offer that and that's going to be um third thursday and third that's thursday um, at, uh, yeah at three we, no or we're gonna four. do four i know third thursday at four. Four. um so um so it's uh, 6 plus uh, 14 and the 20th. So I'll get information out about that. And speaking of information about that, if you want to get heads up on what we're doing for these different kinds of little, um, you know, the, the statistics updates, send me an email and I'll get you on our email list or go to join Ohana on our website at 365hawaii.com and you will be um, in the Ohana email list. And I am desperately trying to get these information out at least a week in advance of these little real estate events so you can tune in. And, um, and again, you're going to get some free resources and some information about moving to Hawaii, including my East Hawaii moving guide if you want to uh, join the Ohana as well. Which is gold. I think so. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. And uh, if you want to learn more about East Hawaii, contact yeah. uh, Amber. She's uh, an amazing realtor and a great resource, as you guys found out. And uh, she comes and joins us every month on the first uh, Wednesday of each month. I love East Hawaii. Yeah, even though she anyway, she drives all the way out here to be with me. So thank you. <laughs> okay, with that, we'll say aloha. Aloha.